So, <clears throat> we've pretty much finished talking about cults, but tonight I just kind of wanted to wrap up some ideas of the cults. Um, and then next week we're going to talk about especially um, the impact of the cults and kind of um, how to uh, witness, kind of uh, focusing back on that. I, I know I kind of backed off on the on the um, witnessing aspect. I wanted to come back around to that now that we're finishing all this up. Um, and uh, as well, I'll come back to that later. And then we'll talk about holidays. Interesting enough, we're not really going to talk that much about Thanksgiving, but we're talking about some other ones. Um, and the flip side of, of knowing all these things and the woes of knowledge. And then the minister who quit is just going to be a, a um, an application of the stuff that we've been going over the past you know two years, um, kind of showing how you can take what we've been talking about and apply it to someone who is um, biased against the traditional Christian view. Um, and then our party's on the 29th. So um, I'm going to be... I'm going to have an official sign-up list next week, but out of the people who are here, how many of you guys think that you will be doing the bake thing, the bake competition? One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't fix my little clicker yet. That's okay. I don't even have any triple A's. Who has triple A's? I mean, come on. Ugh. So anyways... <clears throat> The danger of cults. Um, a lot of times people think that they're kind of exempt from a cult. Like somehow, you know, they they won't get it. Remember in the Jonestown documentary that we saw? You know, nobody joins a cult. And that's kind of, you know, nobody goes into it with this mindset of, you know, I'm joining this cult. Um, in fact, I was talking to Jehovah's Witness one time and I mentioned it being a cult. And I, well, how do you, what do you base that on? And I was like, well, you claim to be part of Christianity and yet you disagree on every main doctrine that there is to disagree on and uh you know then you believe in salvation plus works and you know it, it, i went through a bunch of different things and they just got mad and left and i was like well you asked i didn't even know that they were jehovah's witness at first but yeah anyways um so uh first off the people who are in danger of of of, of the cult are people who are um scripturally speaking very immature um you know they don't really know the bible maybe they've read the bible a few times maybe they know of the bible maybe they you know know things from the bible maybe they think they know things from the bible like for instance cleanliness is next to godliness um you know but they don't really know the bible and so when a cultist starts talking they're it they're not going to have the foundation to know in their heads that they're wrong. See what I mean? So they're going to go through this kind of very confused state and, and just kind of assume that the other person is right because they're quoting the Bible. See what I mean? Um, and, and so the, that's kind of the, the biggest danger is not accurately knowing the word. So as you can tell, this applies to a lot of people, Christians, non-Christians, you know, um, really just a lot of people who fall into this category. Um, another, another big danger of the cult system is that Cults have gone to great extent to spread their message in other in other countries in the languages of those countries, and this becomes extremely complicated in light of the fact that there is little anti-cult curriculum in those other languages. Mm. And the, that combined with the next with the next where, where is it? Um, oh, it's on the next slide. But that combi combined with some of the other factors, like not calling themselves by their cult name or um, um, using the same terms as Christian, traditional Christian doctrine does. See what I mean? It, it causes mass confusion, and in other languages, and it, they don't have that same. You know, like to, like for instance, we have you know all these different books in English and all these different things, and you know. But then what happens when you take that into you know? Uh, people groups in Africa and people groups in, in, in Europe. You see what I mean? There, there's so much different... It, I, I, I think you see what I'm saying. So I'll just kind of... But anyways, um, another thing that they do that, that makes them very dangerous is their propaganda. If you guys have seen or read um, the third Hunger Games, um, Mockingjay, um, one of the big factors, especially in the book, which is I loved the, 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 that she that she wrote like this, was it was all about what people foresaw was going on. 
the propaganda things, the things that were on the television. It wasn't actually what the Capitol was doing or what the 13th District was doing. It's what they appeared to be doing. So, I mean, that was one of the central aspects of the story. And why was that? Why did I like that so much? Because that's exactly what media does today. It's all about the, how things look. And so, as a result, cults follow the same line of thinking. It's all about image. Image, image, image. Um, so they have this, you know, these mass propaganda things, um, and it's just uh, very easy to get confused. Um, I mean, today, I think today is it, there. There are some of the highest um, biblical illiteracy rates that that history has, you know, ever known. People just don't really want to know the Bible. You know, before, they couldn't know the Bible because it was in a language that they didn't understand. But now, it's in a language that they can understand, and they just don't want to learn it. You know what I mean? And so that is a very dangerous place to be in, even if you don't even agree with Scripture, just because it's so easy to get confused. So easy to get confused. Um, so the, a cause will always say something along the lines of this. We alone have truth. The masses are being fooled. Look how good we look. That, that, that's pretty much their, their three-point, uh, every cult's three-point tactic summed up. We alone have truth. Everybody else is wrong everywhere. Now, I'm not talking about relativism, you know, where there's a little bit of truth in everything. What, I, what I'm saying is, like, they make it very exclusive. Ex exclusivistic? Is that, is that the right word? Exclusive. Exclusive. I guess. They make it very exclusive. I, I'll just say that. They, they make it very exclusive. Like, you have to... It's, it's like it's like a social club that you have, like, have to be a part of. You know what I mean? Like, you have to agree with us on every single thing that we say. And if you so much as hint towards the fact that you think that we're wrong, you're out. See what I mean? It's very, um, very group, you know, um, mindset. And then they, they always have this idea that even though Christianity at large claims that there has been no major major doctrinal corruptions, we alone have the truth of this unhistorical thing that happened. For instance, Mormons. You know, well, you know, in years past, the church lost the message based on what historical evidence? Based on, based on what tradition? Based on what anything? You know, they don't have anything to back up this claim, and yet they believe it because... Some crazy guy claimed to have read it from tablets that can't be reproduced or, or even found or anything because an angel, of course, took it away. See what I mean? It's that kind of a mindset that, that, that's not that's not only in the Mormons. It's in all the cult system. They have this, this same idea that you know the, all the masses are being fooled, that they could only understand from this certain perspective. If you When you study cults, you start seeing the same things repeat themselves over and over again. And it's kind of funny because... People are still being fooled by these cults, even though it's the exact same things, just rehashed. Um, and then obviously image. You know, if we can just give the Mormons, for instance, rely heavily on this. Um, you can believe whatever you want. Um, we all look good. Our families are great. You know, we have some of the best family connection that you can ever find. You know, we just we're all just so close. You know, um, just all about that image. Um, so. This kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, in a lot, most of their most of their you know literature and stuff that they hand out, they won't actually address themselves by their name. You know, like even the Jehovah's Witness pamphlets that they'll hand out at the doors, you'll look at it and it won't say anything. Like, do you believe the Bible is God's word? You know, it'll captivate you as a Christian who only believes a little bit of the Bible or only knows a little bit of the Bible, right? But then you look at the very back page on the very bottom and it says JW.org. So, I mean, it never said anywhere on there, Jehovah's Witness. You guys remember that when I showed you that pamphlet? Um, you know, and it's the same kind of thing with a lot of the with a lot of the uh, cult stuff, um, which is what's what's um, which is why cults are are able to grow so rapidly in other countries. Um, in fact, if you look at the statistics of of U.S. growth versus worldwide growth, it is astounding. It, 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 they're, they're growing a small fraction here compared to however many thousands are growing elsewhere, you know what I mean? And once again, that comes down to these factors here. Um, uh, and they don't call themselves by, by their name a lot of times. Even when you talk to them, like, who are you with? Oh, I'm a Christian. Who are you with? Oh, I'm, you know what I mean? They won't ever say, just come out and say it. I am a Mormon. I am with the, with the Church of the Latter-day Saints. I am a Christian scientist. They won't say those things. See what I mean? They'll say, I don't like to go by titles. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I don't like to go by titles. I believe in God. 
you know, or something like that. Something that sounds really good Can until you actually you? do what? You? Yeah, exactly. And, and you start putting down your guard, like, hey, this is an upstanding citizen. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned before, um, worth mentioning again, the, uh, the 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 words that they use, the way uh, the words that they use, yeah, the way that they talk, everything is very Christian. You know, um, it has that 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 terminology, that lingo. It sounds Christian. Until you actually start looking at the doctrine. See what I mean? And oftentimes it is confusing because their doctrine, they'll use the same terms that, that Christianity at large will use for something, except that they'll mean it in a different way. You know what I mean? So they'll talk about salvation. Oh, no, we're not saved by works. And then you actually start looking at their doctrine. Well, yeah, but you then you believe this, which means you are saved by works. Well, no, because because it's like, well... So I mean, you're 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 sugarcoating what you're saying here. Um, also, when they have public meetings and whatnot, seldom identified with official name of sponsor. It's oftentimes just like uh, meetings and stuff that, that's unmarked, just like the literature and stuff. Um, and one another thing that's increasingly important about cults is that the grand majority of them will use the Bible to some extent. Maybe they won't say that it's God's word, but it, they will be in there somewhere. They will, they will, they will use it as almost like a, um, a final seal of approval. You know what I mean? Obviously, some like Mormons, you will use it a lot more than others. Um, but th there, there's always at least a little bit of a hint in, in the in the grand majority of them. Um, also, the missionaries um, themselves, they won't just come out and deny things like the Trinity. You have to actually push them for a little bit. You know what I mean? And, and actually kind of weave around their, their things. Now, what do you mean by that term? You're saying salvation, but do you mean this? You're saying sin, do you mean this? You're saying God, do you mean this? So, I mean, after you clarify them, after you work around it, after this long, drawn-out thing, they'll eventually come to the place of, oh, no, no, we don't believe in the, the, the Trinity like that. But, we, you know, we, we believe in God. It's just, you know what I mean? There's always this, like, little intricate thing. And that's what makes it extremely difficult. When you're dealing with a cultist... It, the truth is never up front. The truth is never up front. You know, oh, I, I think I know what they believe, but then after years and years of study, you start realizing, whoa, that's not what I thought they believed at all. See what I mean? Because the cults do this little thing with with with, with, with weaseling out of stuff. Do it? Yeah, yeah. And actually, that, that, that's, an, that's something good, too, to bring up. I mean, we talked about um, Scientology, for instance. And they get you in the door with, you know, it's like a psychology thing. But then eventually they get around to Xenu and all this nonsense about, you know, uh, you know, all the, what, what do they call it? The, they're like spirits, but they, they don't call them sp spirits. Um, no. Um, oh, that's going to bug me. But anyways, basically spirits. Um, the Ingrams, no. Um, oh. That's going to bug me. But anyways, the, basically, the spirits that have attached themselves to us, and, I mean, all this far out there nonsense is like, whoa, what? So, you know, there, there's always this idea of progression. Um, and then another thing that makes them so di so difficult is that cults are extremely persistent. If you try, let's say the Mormons send two missionaries to your house. So you try to start, you know, countering their beliefs with them. You actually seem to be making some progress. All of a sudden, the meeting will be cut short. Then they'll send someone else, someone new, to come talk to you. It's like, I did all that hard work for nothing. <laughs> See what I mean? And, and, and some, it's very circular like that. But they will always they will always keep going. They don't know when to say enough. Actually, I shouldn't say that because <coughs> the whole Jehovah's Witness came to my door. And they were talking about, um, they were trying to say that Jesus wasn't God. And I showed them from the Greek that he was, or at least the Bible claimed that he was, um, after they had already said, you know, the Bible is God's word, you know, then I then I showed them that, and, and all of a sudden they, they left and they haven't been back since. So I shouldn't say they always follow up. The grand majority of the time, when they see a, a, a target, they, they will. Um, obviously, if, if you actually know what the Bible says, it's going to be a little bit different. But... Um, so that brings us to the to the so what. Why don't we just ignore cults and you know let them do their thing and we'll just do our thing. Um, the 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 first main reason why we should care is because there are counterfeit Jesuses. There are counterfeit Holy Spirits. There are counterfeit apostles. There are counterfeit churches. There are counterfeit gospels. And what that means, in essence, if Jesus is the only way, then that potentially means 
not potentially, but th that that means that there is one. Uh, there is a way that does not lead to life. If there's a way that leads to life, then there must be a way that does not lead to life. Logical conclusion, which means that if they're not believing in Jesus for salvation, they're not saved. See what I mean? So 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 we have to care because their eternal life is at stake. I mean, this is something that we should care about. Uh, I'll give you some examples here. Um, the there's a Native American church um, that we were actually um, looking at at a museum, and they think that the Holy Spirit is peyote. Well, there's a few there's a few things that are that's wrong with that. First off, the Holy Spirit is not a physical thing that has been created, so therefore it can't be peyote. Second off, um, the Holy Spirit is never talked about in physical terms so much as things that can't be grasped: wind, fire, things that you can't hold, things that that, that are that are that are um, beyond human ability. See you know what I mean? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, directing the apostles whether or the Holy Spirit sent them here or there. See what I mean? We're, so there, there's that obvious contradiction there, but yet they still hold to that. So in an essence, what they're doing is blaspheming the Holy Spirit and refusing the righteousness that God has made for them. See what I mean? But once again, um, they'll say something along the lines of, well, that's my culture. Well, yeah, but not all things from your culture should be held on to. I know that sounds very narrow-minded, but I mean that goes for everybody, not just Native Americans. That goes for everybody. Um, for instance, I, I'm German. I probably shouldn't kill Jews. Just throwing that out there. See what I mean? Not everything from your culture you should hang on to. Um, uh, in St. Corinthians, um, Paul, in, in, in a fit of irritation, um, uses a very funny term to describe these people who are spreading these false teachings. He calls them super apostles. <laughs> and it, it's funny in, in his, in his in, if you read it in the Greek, it's a lot funnier. I think the English kind of loses some of um, Paul's just severe sarcasm in, in the letter. Because he's all talking, he's all gentle. Then he gets to the middle and he's all talking about, you know, you guys should give to this. And then, and then, and then out of nowhere, he throws this very angry tone, very sarcastic tone about these super apostles. And he does something very similar to, to in, in Galatians when he's talking about, you know, people who are doing something similar. Um, and he's like, you know, you foolish Galatians, who has so easily captivated you? You know, and, and, and so obviously Paul thought it was very important to address these things. You know, so that's another reason why it should be important to us. Um, but obviously, um, in Galatians, he talks about this, a different gospel than the one we proclaimed. And he says that the person who, who preaches this different gospel is to be accursed. Obviously, I already talked about this a hundred times, not by us. We don't do the cursing. However, um, the, the point there being, you know, that's very bad. He, he's not saying they should be ignored. He said they are accursed. See what I mean? That that's that's quite strong vocabulary there. Paul, Paul didn't didn't ever see the possibility of just ignoring the 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 cult system. He he never saw that as a possibility. Um, in fact, Acts tells us that um, before the Apostolic Council around Acts 15 or so, that Paul is in. Um, I want to say. Antioch, I'm not positive about that, and he's just arguing um, with a bunch of people who, who are trying to teach these false doctrines, and then he ends up going to the Apostolic Council, and, and they have the official statements that said, yes, we don't believe that you have to do this to be saved. So, anyways, you can read that in Acts. Uh, but anyways, um, and so we have to see that there is a strong danger, a strong danger in these cult systems. Uh, we're talking about people losing their salvation. You know, um, obviously God can defend himself. Um, we shouldn't be okay with people blaspheming God. But, however, remember that if, if God is willing to patiently endure these things, we should probably patiently endure them too. You know what I mean? Um, I, I know people oftentimes look at, but what about Sodom and Gomorrah? God completely destroyed them. For every one people that God ever completely destroyed, there are hundreds that he didn't. Think about that. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities. Okay. Meanwhile, he left everybody else. He told the Israelites to go in and kill a few, a, a, a few of the um, of the people there called Canaanites. He left everybody else and, and the, the, all the all the uh, Semitic peoples uh, up in the north. He, all the people who are now in, now in Turkey and whatnot. He left all of them. See what I mean? For every for every act of judgment that God carried out, there was a lot more mercy that He carried out elsewhere. So, I mean, let's not make this out of balance, okay? Um, don't get carried away to one extreme there. 
Um, the fake Jesus of the cult will pervert the mind of the believers. Okay. Um, it's something that, if left unchallenged, they will actually start thinking differently. They will start acting differently. They will be lost in this. Think of it as if it was you. Would you want to be lost in a sea of confusion? Would you want to go your whole life doing all these works, thinking that you were serving Jesus, only to find out when you reached, reached the white throne that you were serving Satan the whole time? Would that be something that you would want to experience for yourself? Then how can we possibly hold <coughs> our salvation with such arrogance while these other people are lost? See what I mean? And I think that that's that one of the biggest problems why Christians don't don't witness to the cult is because of arrogance. I don't think this is because of fear. I think it's because of arrogance. We we forget that we are not here for our life. We aren't here for our pleasure. We, we get caught up in those things, especially in America. It's so easy. You know, Black Friday is coming up. The, I heard this said once. The day after we spend the day being <laughs> thankful, we go and buy everything we've ever wanted and get in debt for it. <laughs> See what I mean? It's well, a little... It even like 2 o'clock on the day. <laughs> God, thank you for this. Oh, we got to go to Walmart. Go, 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 go. See what I mean? It's just a little bit, you know... Hypocritical, I guess. Um, um, and also, um, it will blind the world not only not only to, to to the truth, but it will blind the world because they don't understand the difference between true Christianity and the fakes. See what I mean? So we have to stand up for truth, not just for our sake, not just for the sake of the people stuck in the cult, but for those people who aren't even in religion. See what I mean? When you stand up for truth, everyone wins. When you stand up. For pleasure and for just letting things go all the time. See what I mean? Now, I'm not saying you should be hateful in your message. I'm not saying you should go and, you know, proclaim the evil to everybody. We'll talk about that next week with, with, with witnessing tactics, okay? But we shouldn't... The, uh, let me put it like this. What's real big in our culture today? Relativism, right? You do whatever you want, whatever feels good, as long as, you know, you just follow your own arrow. You know, everything's, everything will be fine. Is it just coincidence that the church just so happens to have the same attitude when it comes to witnessing? No. It, it, things like that don't overlap like that in history. See what I mean? We're allowing our culture to get to us to where we are okay with other people dying as long as it's not us. See what I mean? And that kind of an attitude is very unchristian. We have to remember that we're here for a purpose. Everybody is here for a purpose. Um, so... Um, we must not tolerate false doctrines within our mind, within our midst. The, the, um, what what the Bible talks about oftentimes is it talks about you know, oh we'll cast this person out from your midst and don't associate with these people. Who are the people he's talking about? The people who are living boldly in sexual immorality. Those kind and the, he he cast he cast one of them out in First Corinthians. Remember, and there were some other issues like that where he said you know don't associate with these people. He's not talking about people struggling. He's people. He's talking about people who are living in a lifestyle that they're justifying and saying that this is okay to do this. See what I mean? Um, and then also who who else is he talking with? People who are opposing the church. Remember in First John, the cult was getting going in the church. The the heresy. Yes. However, these people didn't grow up in a cult. These people. It's not like. You know, they, they, they had heard the truth and they just got confused or something. These were people who were teaching false doctrine in the church and trying to cause a problem. See what I mean? So how does that relate to us? Let's say Ben is causing a problem in the church. You know, he's constantly bad-mouthing the pastor. He's, he's constantly doing things behind the pastor's back, all these different things. You don't associate with that person. The Bible doesn't say not to show, associate with cults. See the difference there? Mm, yeah. We should be witnessing to the cults. Paul never intended for us to avoid people stuck in cults. He intended for us to avoid those people who are corrupting the church. The difference. Um, <clears throat> so the church has a responsibility of answering the claims of the cults, lest the salvation of some be lost. There are some even even that even that I know who grew up in the church and now are in a cult. See what I mean? It's our responsibility, not if we desire. It's our responsibility to proclaim the truth. That's our responsibility. God, God gave us that. He commanded it. Remember the last thing Jesus said before he left? I have been given all authority. Go and make disciples. That was the last thing he had to say before he left. I think that that was of utmost importance. 
And uh, the, when we start forgetting that, that w that's what it's about is when we really start getting off to topic. So that obviously brings up the, the question that many people ask. Surely if God didn't want these heresies going around, he would stop them. I don't know what this is based on other than unbiblical um, optimism, I guess, but it's just very – it doesn't make any sense. What about world hunger? God still lets people die around the world for hunger, right? What about Adam and Eve's sin? God knew that they were going to sin, didn't he? What about drugs? Surely if God truly wanted people to not do drugs, he wouldn't have made, a, you know, the pot plant, for instance. See what I mean? Dumb things like this. Murder. Well, once again, and I've already talked about this, about, you know, um, God allowing certain things. Um, but once again, bring this up. Just because God allowed something doesn't mean he, doesn't mean he approves it. But, but second off, God doesn't condone his church being useless. God told us to go do something. Could he have done it? Yeah, he could have, but he told us to. See I mean? So why did he do that? I don't know. Why don't you go study that for yourself? In the meantime, go back to the... See, we get on rabbit trails. Well, why didn't he just do it himself? He didn't. So does it matter why he didn't? He told us to. See what I mean? Don't get off on the on the on the on the far out there rabbit trail. If you remember, there's a parable uh, that Jesus tells, um, and he talks about these three servants, and 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 one of them takes what's been given to him and just buries it. Doesn't even invest it into a bank or anything. Um, which banks back then are pretty much how they are now. You don't make anything in interest, but you still make something in interest. You know, like point zero one. Um, and yet, what does God say? He says, take away from this person and give it to the person who had the most. And they say, but God, or Master, he already has so much. And he says, to those who are given much, much will be expected. But to those who are given a little bit, even what they have, or aren't, who don't have anything, even what they have will be taken away from them. See what I mean? It's, 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 it's that idea there. So, um, God never condones you. <coughs> um, so that takes us to the first of these really oddball cults. And I'm not really going to talk very much about them, just um, some interesting aspects of them. Because, you, once again, cults, you study cults, and you're going to find the same things repeated over and over again. Herbert Armstrong is God's apostle. You know, he's, 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 he has the word from God, has best understanding of the Bible. Now, how does that sound familiar? Charles Russell with Jehovah's Witness. Um, Joseph Smith Jr. with Mormonism. See what I mean? Uh, what's your face with Christian science? Um, Ed, Mary Baker Eddy. See what I mean? All these different people, it's the exact same claim all over again. And you're going to find this in cults. It always, it's always this one person who has divine knowledge that you have to understand exactly how they say um, to, to, to get to this way of salvation. Um, however, in today's Worldwide Church of God, there's a huge, wonderful thing happening. There's a schism between the Church of God and the Worldwide Church of God. The Church of God is Armstrongism. That's actually still follows Herbert Armstrong, right? But then the church as a whole, the Worldwide Church of God, the, the actual main branch of the church, has gone from being a cult to not being a cult. They did the exact opposite. That's why I included them is because this is something we don't see happening. They started out as a cult and then went not cult. Hmm. Wow. Very interesting. However, there is that other branch still, the Church of God, Armstrongism. That, that is still a cult. So, anyways, basically, they believe in the God family. It's kind of like Mormons' idea of, you know, different go gods in the... F it's kind of like that. Um, Jesus was, was resurrected spiritually, not physically. Very similar to what the Jehovah's Witness teach. Um, the good works must be added to Christ's work, similar to what every cult teaches. Um, Christians are God beings, and when they become... You know, when you get saved, you are added to the family of, of the God family, you know. So, um Kind of reminds me of that um, that movie about the you know the mafia, um, the Godfather. Mm. <laughs> no, nobody, come on. <clears throat> but this this is another thing that's very interesting that you can see very much so in 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 still going around, and that's called Anglo Israelism. Okay, basically what this belief says is, okay, so so there was the kingdom of Israel, but that split into the northern and southern kingdoms. Which, throughout the course of time, the northern kingdom, which was called Israel, fell to Assyria. Now, when they fell, they, Assyria took all the people from, from the northern kingdom and just dispersed them throughout the, throughout the, in a different area, okay? So, by the time of Jesus, not all of the people of Israel were back in the land of, of Israel. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, what happened to these ten tribes? Well, according to this view, um, they went over into what is now England. Um, and so then when the, when the settlers came in the 1600s to, um, America, um, they were there too, which means that, um, Judah represents the curse, 
Okay, the, the, the southern kingdom that was left there and the it, it, Jewish people who are still over there, they represent the curse. And so they're just – they don't inherit the promises of the Old Testament. But then the ten tribes, us in America and in England, um, they get the they get the blessings now. They are they are the, the true Israel, okay, um, which is what GB stands for Great Britain and US stands for United States. Um, so they're they're the true Israel. Judah, the, the people over there right now, they're they're the fake Israel. They represent the curse. So this is actually something that 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 has surfaced in many different ways um, throughout American Christianity, and that's the idea that you know um, that we're now a blessed people. Right, exactly. That America is somehow picks up exactly where Israel left off. Um, once again, I've already talked in great lengths to that, so I don't really want to want to waste time. But very unique things in this cult. Very unique things in this cult. Things that I have never seen in any other cult. Very, very interesting. However, they're not that big, so. Uh, another one is Seventh Day Adventist, which for the longest time I didn't know how to believe. I mean, how to feel about them. But uh, they, they are actually a cult, I, I, which is something I did not know. Um, there's a spirit of prophecy, basically, which which um, is is necessary for correctly understanding the bible right but then and it was on as i mentioned here it was on the founder um however this is all this is very unique from cults however the bible is superior to their writings so even though they have the typical cult thing of you know we have the we have the truth and everything the bible is still superior this is very unique i mean even the mormons what is it that they say in their statement um we believe in the bible so much as it is translated correctly is that that's about how they say it, right and jehovah's witness what do they say um well if you're going to use a bible besides the new world you need to use king james when uh when grandma was younger she was taking a, a course to the mail mm -hmm. and she said a lot of it you know it seemed yeah. But then it started getting kind of weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that that's a very interesting and unique aspect that you, you won't find in cults. So very interesting there. Um, heaven is for believers. Soul sleep is for uh, for other people who don't get saved. For this is pretty much exactly what the Jehovah's Witness teach about soul sleep and everything. They they believe pretty much the exact same thing. Um, the wording is a little bit different, but as far as I can tell, it's the same thing. Um, salvation is by works and grace, you know, just like all other cults. Um, except what's unique to them is a strong, strong uh, emphasis on legalism, like more so than like Jehovah's Witness and everything. I mean, it, it gets weird in their legalism, okay? Like, for instance, the, the mark of the beast is worshiping on Sunday, having church on Sunday. But, but here's the thing, though. They won't – if you say, so Sunday is the mark of the beast, and they'll say no. But then throughout this long, drawn-out thing, they'll say that eventually the mark of the beast will be those who have church on Sunday. So it's – will be the mark of the beast? Or, I don't really understand how they how they reconcile the two views, but whatever. Um, just this really – they take the legalism, legal, legalism to a very weird place. Um, and obviously, so once again, you have to um, worship on Saturday, Seventh-day Adventist. A lot of people don't realize that Sunday is actually the beginning of the week, not the end of it. So seventh day would be Saturday. So. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> um, but those are the two interesting things there, that the Bible is still superior and that um, they, they take that legalism to such a dark place. Um, then there's Swedenborgian Swedenborgianism. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes, say that 20 times really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no trinity. There's that's mo modelism, which has been going around in, in cults for forever, like literally since at least the 300s, if not earlier. That basically says that that God takes off masks. You know what I mean? Like He only appears as the Father. He appears as the Son. He appears as the Holy Spirit. But as one person, He just you know He changes into who He needs to be at the time, um, which is called modalism. Um, some scripture is God's word, but it has to be according to Swedenborg. So, you know, the, the kind of – how many times have you heard this statement in the calls? Right. Some parts of scripture, but it has to be interpreted by this. Um, salvation is, a con is continual, but get this, through the process of overcoming evil. So as you overcome evil in your life, you are saved. Pretty dark if you mess up, right? Um does it totally reset you? <laughs> I honestly don't know how the point system works on this one. Um, there is no devil. Get this. In heaven, you are an angel. and In, 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 in hell, you are an evil spirit. Huh. 
And get this, the final judgment is facing the truth about yourself. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so the truth you don't know? <clears throat> Honestly, this one confused me to no end. I was like, wait, my head, it hurts. Ow. <laughs> Um, Rosicrucianism. Oh, yeah, suck on that, check. God's impersonal. I didn't understand, I didn't really understand their, um, this very much because there's like, God is these seven spirits, but then he's in all. So it's pantheistic, but then it has these seven spirits of God that are dispersed. I didn't really understand it, um, at all. Um, it, it sounded like a contradiction to me, which is probably why I don't understand it, but I'm sure that they would be able to, you know, explain it all away, as cults always do. Um, Jesus is not God. He's simply a spirit, which, which it, 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 an evolving spirit or evolved spirit, whatever. Um, evolution is actually very key in Rosicrucianism. Um, for instance, there is no an atonement. Everything's by re reincarnation. You know, everything's man is evolving into a into a divine being. It's this process throughout the world. Um, so I mean, that's kind of weird. Um, this one I, I included it as unique because. It combined evolution and reincarnation with Christianity. I, mean, I thought that was pretty unique. Confusing, confusing, but unique. Um, obviously, the pantheism thing with God—that's that's that's a, that's a view that's been going around for forever. So I mean, that's not that unique. Um, so, uh, any questions about those cults there? Just some weird stuff. I didn't really. I'm not really getting into them because first off, the chances of you guys running into them is pretty small. But I mean, I just thought that there were some interesting aspects. If you're interested, I took it straight from here. In fact, the wording is even the exact same as he has in here. So, if you would like to actually know more on the topic, it's in the appendix. So, if that's something that interests you. Um, honestly, I didn't see the point of wasting my time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and also half, if you guys have ever heard of that, half.com, it's kind of like eBay's little brother or whatever. Um, they they have really good deals. Like, I found Pinocchio on DVD for, like, what was it, like, four or five bucks? I was like, what? Especially since at Walmart, sells are for, like, 25 bucks. What? Anyways, um, so just some causes of cults. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? Because sometimes a cult will be started when the church is doing everything right. See what I mean? Sometimes there's nothing you can do, and a cult will just start. If you, For instance, I talked about this at the end of the New Testament class. John writes the Gospel of John. Not really a heresy problem going on, right? But then by 1 John, there is. It's inside the church, right? But by the same John, they are now been kicked out of the church, but they are still attacking the church from the outside. Okay, so when we get to 3 John... And it seems like the grand majority of the church is believing this false view. So then we get to Revelations, and what does Jesus say? You've lost your first love. See, so we see this constant deterioration regardless of how hard John is trying to combat it. See what I mean? He's trying very hard to combat this thing, but between Emperor Domitian sending him to Patmos and all the other crap that's going on, he's unable to stop to stop the heresy. Um, and it's kind of kind of the same the same is true for the church of today. Sometimes there's absolutely nothing that we can do. And that's, that's that is worth noting. However, these are some of the some of the causes. First off, fearing the changing world. Sometimes when people look into the face of, of change and they they straighten up their their belt and they they take on the challenge, the Christian church just kind of backs off and hides somewhere that's not changing. I mean, look at how some of these buildings that that, that people are still trying to cling on to for the la for their last breath that just completely show the, 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 the time of hundreds of years ago in the church. See what I mean? Still trying to have the, the, the glass, the, the, the painted glass, like they, not painted, um, stained. the stained glass like they did 100 years ago, or not 100 years ago, like 700 years ago. Still trying to do the do the tall buildings, still trying to do it where, where the community is all Christian and goes to mass or church or whatever every you know week. Still trying to hold on to these same things, even though the world around us is changing. You know, and that's one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest problems um, for not just with cults, but but for the lack of witnessing in general. Um, when Christians just are afraid of the change, they're just afraid of what might happen. 
um, you guys are young, so this won't be that big for you right now, but when you guys get older, think about these older people that we now think about and how they don't want to change it. They want to do things the same dumb way. For That's going to be you in the future. Why? Because as we grow old, we cling on to the things that we know. See what I mean? It, it, the, the biggest problem with old people is that they don't want to change. The biggest problem with, with young people is they don't want to learn. It's this endless repetition. If we would learn and they would change, the church would hypothetically be, be ready to face the world. But those two factors don't ever actually happen in mass amounts. Um, so so that, that, that fearing the changing world. Um, second, a divided, ignorant, and ineffective church. For instance, here in, here in our community, none of the churches were really doing anything. Now, look at what happened. Our church started doing something. We actually got a, a, a pastor rather than just having no pastor for so long. Um, and so what, what is happening now? The Catholic Church is now doing a, a, a food pan or not a food pantry, but a um, soup kitchen. The Methodist Church is now having a food pantry. These are people who three, four years ago weren't doing a single thing in the community. The Baptist Church over here, uh, First Baptist, they are having VBS every year. I think this is the second year that they did it, or first, first year. No, this the, is the second for the Catholic Church. Yeah, same for the Catholic first. Okay, that's right, yeah. Who was the first to do the VBS? We were. See what I mean? We did something and people followed. Why? Because it's power been puts like this, where there's no, where there's no, where there's no um, guidance. The people just perish. They just there's no direction. You know, so the people just kind of these drift around. They're like apart. they're like turds out there. <laughs> so see, you see what I mean? I'm not trying to say that our church is the one true church. What I'm saying, what I am saying is, we the the church in Tularosa was ineffective. And so people spiritually just became ineffective. They just sat around doing whatever they wanted. And as a result, the only cult that exists in, in, Jehovah's, in, in Tularosa, Jehovah's Witness, they grew. See what I mean? The only cult that exists here. Now, officially. Hmm. Asterisk, officially. Because there are Satanists around here, uh, Wiccans and that kind of stuff. There are, well, that's technically the uh, cult. There are people who are do those house churches. Um, what's her face over there on, on Alamo Street who has her whole weird Passover thing? And you know, there, there are other cults, okay, but the only official uh, cult presence. Um, so let's take this apart. Divided. When, when, when you can't see, see things, you know what happened is, is eventually if you go to church long enough, you're not going to agree with the pastor on something. Fact. In case you were you didn't know that. However, if every time that, that happens, you just keep hopping from church to church, you will be doing yourself a great injustice. Have you guys ever seen Cop and a Half? Yeah. yeah. You will be doing yourself a great injustice. <laughs> um, you know, it, you will not grow. You will not have people to depend on. I tried to tell this to somebody, and they wouldn't listen to what I said. Now they are not going to any church because they hop from church to church to our church. And then when I told them that. They would they wouldn't listen to what I say said they wouldn't they went a little bit longer until the pastor offended them of course because the pastor will offend you one day uh, no matter who the pastor is and so now they don't go anywhere see they weren't willing to change they weren't listening to, to, to they weren't willing to just let th some things go to just learn about some things they had their mind made up um, they were divided they didn't know what their purpose in going to church was see what I mean well, I asked one time in, in a service I was doing a fifth Sunday and it was just a real search minute I said what is the purpose of the church? I got 20 different answers, and none of them said witnessing. I couldn't believe it. I was like, why are we even here if we're not well, witnessing to people? Well, for a long time, they just kind of stared at you blankly. Right? Like, I don't know. I thought I came here every Sunday morning to be entertained, and then I go home, and I do my thing. You know what I mean? It was completely revelation or, uh, revolutionary. Revolutionary? Re no. What? It was a revelation to them. Um, you know, th this idea that the church is there for witnessing. Um Ignorant, not knowing the Bible, not knowing, once again, the direction of the church, just kind of being there, um, and ineffective. Not really doing anything in the church, just showing up every Sunday morning, or showing up on holidays, or, you know, just showing up to, to do your community service, I guess, is what they... It's like you're, you have an hour sheet, and so you have to go for major holidays, just so, you know, it, 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 that way, you know, God will see it or something. I don't know, whatever. Um, brownie, points. <laughs> brownie points, you know. Um, or sometimes it's just to appease a, a, an old relative before they die so that they can go to – I've actually seen this, especially um, with the Catholic Church. Yeah. I was talking to one person. I said, I just go to Mass at, you know, a, a couple times a year so that way when they die, they'll, they'll die in peace. I was like, well, that's dark. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anyways. Um, 
Also, another thing is developments and research. New factors. Okay, the the theory of helio heliocentrism, which basically says that the sun is the is the center of, the, of this of this um, galaxy and not the Earth. Um, that was proposed by a by a person of faith, and the church at large said that he was being he was trying he was coming against the church and he was coming against the the Bible. See what I mean? See what I'm saying? It was new factors, and the church didn't know how to how to how to respond to it. The possibility of evolution. Forty-one years ago, they discovered what is now called Lucy. You guys have been on Google today, now. The, the one of the one of the you know missing links, one of the less oh, less yeah, evolved yeah, yeah. Uh, humans, um, or one of the you know very close to human things. Um, Lu it was called Lucy. You know, if you guys know evolution, what happened when that when, when that was discovered? The church crumbled. They, they quaked in fear. Not that not that the church will ever go away, because the Lord will always. Um, have some preserved for himself, um, obviously until the end. Um, however, um, uh, you know, just uh, th th they quaked in their boots because there was a new factor. So how did some of them respond in fear? Well, it's not really, it's not really another, uh, another, it's not really another thing. It's just, uh, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, that's possible. Obviously, the same as we can't prove that it was a, a less evolved human. So I mean, th there are other possibilities, obviously. But what the church has done with evolution. Is they just instead of studying the evidence and, and bringing up a logical conclusion, they hide from it and just deny it. You know what I mean? They're they're not willing to, to face the new factors that are all around us. Um, um, another factor is what Revelations 12 talks about. Satan is angry at the fact that God has won and God is it is in control still, and he's angry about that. Read through Revelations 12, you'll see it. He was cast out. And so what did he do in his anger? He went and attacked the church. See what I mean? So so another reason of the cause is because Satan is angry. He knows his end is coming, and obviously that doesn't bode well for him. So he, he, he lashes out at, 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 at Christians and at the faith. Anything to, to thwart God's plan wherever he can. Um, and another another factor goes right in, right in step with the first one. Loving tradition over people. For instance, how many churches, when they switched from hymns to modern songs, older people lashed out and attacked the worship leaders? Yeah. Happened all across America. It's still happening in America. See what I mean? Why? Because they're, they 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 love the, the the hymn more than their Christian brother who loves God. See what I mean? So because you love him so much, you're you're yelling at at, at someone else who is God's servant. See what I mean? You're taking your anger out on – what does James tell us about this? The anger of man doesn't produce the righteousness of God. See what I mean? Um, or or getting upset and bad-mouthing the pastor because because you switch from a um, giant wooden pulpit to a to a, a, a smaller see-through see pulpit. See what I mean? Taking small things that don't even matter and making them big things because that's not the way you've always done it. See what I mean? And I, you know, I've had to face this too, and I'm and I'm only 24. You know, like the whole thing with people talking in church. I don't, that's not the way I, I've always done it. You know, I don't like that at all. You know, people respect the house of God, but then you start realizing it's not about the place; it's about the people. Yeah. It's not about whether people talk; it's about whether people grow. See what I mean? And changing that is very difficult because it's what you've always known. So I'm not condemning another person. I understand this is exactly what I go through. It doesn't justify it, though. See what I mean? And um, so the best way to defend against cults, stay in your Bible. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. When you hit something that confuses you, go to something that doesn't confuse you. Or keep reading it until it's not confusing anymore. See what I mean? This is what I've been talking about for two years, and this is why I've been talking about it. Because cults weasel in. Okay, it's not. There's no such thing as... Oh, I'm getting off topic, but... Stay in your word, and I think that's a good way to close up this this discussion today. Um, I guess it's not really a discussion, as I'm more of talking and you're listening. So this lecture. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to be talking about impact. What what impact has the church had on I and mean, has the cult had on the church today? How can we impact the cults? So that kind of stuff. Um, so any questions about anything we've gone over, or anything that we will go over? Oh, I did have a question. Yes. Um, the world. 
Church of God mm-hmm. and the Church of God. Mm-hmm. You said how the World Church of God, you know, went to Christianity. Right. So it's just the Church of God in America. The World Church of God is like everywhere else. I, I don't get. What's the difference between the two? There, it's not necessarily they're in different places. It's that they go by different names because after the schism, one went to Christianity while the other went to um, went to its traditional beliefs. So like what happened? There was like two churches. Yeah, now there are two churches. There was one church, and then there was a schism, which means there was a break and then thought. And so the church at How large the went this way. Yes, exactly. Okay, the the large church went to the Worldwide Church of God. The small faction stayed with the tradition. However, it is important to note with that one though that they do say in their statements that they are continually updating their beliefs depending on you know what they find in the Bible. So technically, it could go back to a cult in the future. With that being said, you know, okay. nothing's set in stone. Like the Assemblies of God, they say, these are our 16 fundamental truths. This is, you know, we're all about this, right. you know. And these are the four. Men. Right. They don't have that. You know, they, they have like, okay, as of now, this is our beliefs, mm-hmm. you know, but that could potentially change in the future. So, um, any other questions? I do have one more question. Good. Where do you see the four square church? The four square church, as far as doctrine, is Christian. Oh. However, there are some some people in the four square church that go into that weird spirit stuff that we were talking about with the charismatic cult. Um, right. Was it a week? Last week. No. There are some people in there. However, as far as the church itself is concerned, they are Christian. Oh. They vary with the assemblies of God on small details, not on major doctrine. Mm-hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. good question though. In fact, if you guys noticed, I didn't even bring up the four square right. church throughout this whole discussion. Any other questions? Great questions, Grace. Okay, cool.